Well, I think it would be a cool idea to see if I can perform a rendezvous and docking. I launch rendezvous and docking. You from in, inside the cockpit only. No map mode or anything like that. So I've never, I've never done that. But I've always, I mean, I've always known theoretically how to do it. And the real question is, do I brute force it or do I buzz Aldrin it? And uh, I think I'm just going to use the Mark 1 command pod because I know that it has controls inside. It actually has terrible, lousy visibility, but I don't think we've got anything else with decent visibility. I, I, I'm going to be honest and say that I haven't really learned how to use this, uh, all these controls inside this thing. So I am kind of just guessing my way through it. Okay, so these all fire, then we detach those, then we detach that, then we do that, then we detach that, and then on the way back down we detach that, and we parachute home! Yay! Okay, so and we have probably enough Delta V to get into space. So, let's get into the capsule and see what we've got here. So, let's bring our stuff online. Junk space system. Oh, there we go. That's a good thing to start with. Um... Docking tar current docking targets. We should be able to select vessels. Docking target. Yes, we are selected that. Okay. So that's target management. Vessel view. Uh, radar altitude. Okay, so that's good. That's graph. Oh, yeah, we got orbit. That's orbital parameters. That's actually the way to do that. We've got a lot of no signal here. Maybe I should have put a signal thing on it. And uh, yeah, we do have a tiny window here. See that? We can see everything. So now we got what we've got to do, actually, is wait for the target to come by. So the target is all the way over there on the horizon. So I'm going to start accelerating time and wait for it to come up close to us. It's the mama to us all. Okay, this is good. I should probably enable stability control, right? That's one stage away. So, what is my uh, altitude and everything? Great. I'm just trying to follow these over now. Is there a way to select uh, nav ball mode or not navigation mode? I'm just going to fly it manually, I guess. Uh, what am I looking for is orbit here. We have orbital parameters on the right. Um, but we're all, we're, we are actually arcing over a little faster than I think is safe. Our velocity has got up to 400. Is that real velocity? No, that's 300. Uh-oh. Something exploded there. It's not a good sign. Uh, I may have already failed this because I started turning over very, very fast. I'm going to see if I can hold this attitude with the... Uh, okay, wait a second. Velocity, altitude, 12 kilometers. Uh, 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 uh. Where is my vertical speed? Vertical speed, 239. Horizontal speed, 500 meters per second. Thrust to weight ratio was now about 2G. I think I might just actually make this. I'm just having to burn at a, a non-ideal attitude. Oh yeah, my Apple apps is like up around 70 kilometers now, so I can totally do this. Uh, so what I'm seeing is this here, right? This is gonna be the most boring looking stream ever because it's me looking at instruments. Okay, I'm going to flatten this and point it at the horizon now because I don't need any more vertical speed. Oh, you know what? Yeah, let's ditch that stage. Okay, so we're now a little better off. We're going to fire this. I'm going to fire my rocket to get away from this target. And then, then and then and then we will drop into a lower orbit behind this. Oh yeah, distance 145 kilometers. And it is out in front of me, right? So... If I... Yeah, I, I see the number now. It's 140... It's, it's there, and we're going to have to get in below it. What is our current altitude? 104. Bring our periaps up to the correct altitude, and then we'll be in our target orbit. There we go. 40, 143 by 140. Okay, now, docking target is 85 kilometers out. So what I want to do is adjust my attitude. Right, I'm going to point radially outwards. 
And then I'm going to look out the window here and see if I can see it. Ah, there it is. See it? We can actually see our target, right? Oh yeah, bring my nose up to look at it. There we go. And if I look up now, I should see the surface of Kerbin. Yes! Look at that. Woohoo! Okay, that's great. So now the next thing is that we need to, you know, work on getting close to the target. Uh, so, and so you know, the other thing we need to do is adjust our relative inclination, right? So our relative inclination is 0. 0.612. So, now, here's the question. We have two options here. One is that, and one is the other one. And I don't remember which... I'm going to aim... Okay, so... 19 seconds. So now I'm going to make another burn. I'm trying to reduce our relative inclination here. So the, what I'm looking at are these numbers here, right? See, it says 0 0.325. Uh, and this is my time too. So every time I fire the engines, it decreases this. But when I get too close, this number starts going up. So you want to account for that. Okay, that's as close to our target. There we go. 0 0.03. Ah, uh, 0 0.001. Okay. So I don't know actually where my various attitude control things are, but we're, we're doing fine. So now, it tells us we're 70 kilometers from the target. So given that I'm about 7 kilometers below it, I should pick up 49 kilometers per orbit. So, what I want to do next is wait until I'm about 25 kilometers away and then perform the burn. Are you taking the Tide Pod challenge? What? No, I'm not a Tide Pod challenge. Yeah, that's not no. So now I'm going to orbit until my target is 40, is about 25 kilometers away, right? Okay, let's, let's slow the time warp and let's look for the target again. Uh... There it is. There's my target. 30 kilometers out. Oh, damn. I didn't mean to switch to map mode. Sorry. Didn't want to cheat like that. Okay, we're about 39 kilometers out. So what I'm going to do is aim along the orbit and then raise my orbit just a touch. We're going to do it... What what this is called is co-elliptic transfer orbits. The idea is the spacecraft perform these r repeated raising of periaps and apoaps. And yeah, Kerbal VR, unfortunately, isn't very good for drinking wine and stuff at the same time, right? So I'm going to raise my apoaps up to about 147. And that should put me three kilometers below it. Let's see, what is... 0.2 degrees, okay. So now it tells me I have 17 minutes to wait before I get close to the target again. Let's do this. We're 7.5 kilometers to the target. You know what? I think I should raise my orbit completely to to 50, 150. Okay. Well, let's see how close I get to the target. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is point my spacecraft about here. And again, I should be able to see the target out the window. There we go. Hold on. Le this is how astronauts do it. Houston doesn't allow them to go the map screen. It's too scary for them. Yes, in real life, the map screen is too dangerous. I hear the Soviets use the map screen to get the upper hand in the space race. Yes. The Soviets had many advantages. I'm not sure their advantages were the instrumentation that they used. Okay, we're down to like 400 meters, right? Notice this? Now let's actually turn us around. We should be able to totally see the target there. See it? Now actually what I should do uh, is figure out what orientation I'm in. Because what I want to do is approach it from the side where... I can see the docking port. So the docking port is on the right side. So I'm gonna, oh, yeah, I'm gonna rotate the spacecraft. Right. Right, and then I'm gonna 
translate sideways. There we go. Okay, so we're translating sideways relative to the target now. I'm going to turn off my nav thing and look for the target again. There it is right there. This is kind of cool even though I'm not, I don't really have this set up for navigation. I think I'm going to be really close. This is very exciting. This is the least exciting thing ever and yet I am actually, my temperature is, is hot. I, I'm going to start up my heart rate thing just to see. I'm really curious. It says measuring my heart rate on my Apple Watch right now. Uh, because I, I gotta say, I'm kind of fascinated. Okay, uh, there we go. Okay, so now I'm aiming towards the target. Okay. Woo! I think I'm just gonna try docking it like this. Actually, no, it says like 66 or whatever beats per minute. So I'm moving in towards the target at 0.3 whatever meters per second. So let's, we're 60 meters out moving at 1 meter per second. Ah, more boring would be doing the same from Kerbal Space Center. Okay, we're 17 meters out, slowing my approach speed to uh, 8 inches per second. In fact, let's slow it down to about 4 inches per second. 5 inches per second. Or oh, 0.126 meters per second for those people that still speak in metric. Uh, oh yeah, so I, uh, last week I was building the XB70 and you saw that I did the whole... Uh, video about zip fuels and stuff there's one other thing that i didn't mention that i forgot i forgot to mention that i wanted to include in that video was that there was one particular flight where things went wrong and the front landing gear wasn't deploying so uh they were worried they would have the pilots would have to bail out and you know, they still had fuel, so they went and did a few go-arounds, and, you know, engineers on the ground said, well, we think the problem is that there's a circuit breaker that's not passing power. So, they went and looked around, and in one of their flight manuals, they found, like, a paper clip, and they used that to short-circuit the particular breaker which was bust. So, a paper... Well, I think we docked. I think we docked. Uh... Yes! Woohoo! Yay! You see, just like a pro. Ah, yes, okay. Well, and that only took 52 minutes. Ha! <sighs> So, uh, anyway, what was I going to say? Yeah, yeah, so they, they short circuited that particular breaker and that caused the gear to deploy. It also caused three of the four brakes to jam on. So when the aircraft landed, its landing gear caught fire. Anyway, I was qu I think I'm quite happy with that particular thing. <laughs>